Pope Honorius I died the 12th of October 638 was pope from the 27th of October 625 to his death in 638 Honorius according to the Liber Pontificalis came from Campania and was the son of the consul Petronius he became pope two days after the death of his predecessor, Boniface V. The festival of the elevation of the cross is said to have been instituted during the pontificate of Honorius, which was marked also by considerable missionary enterprise. Much of this was centered on England, especially Wessex. He also succeeded in bringing the Irish Easter celebrations in line with the rest of the Catholic Church. Papacy. <inaudible> <inaudible> Topic. Honorius became involved in early discussions regarding the doctrine of monothelitism, which is the teaching that Christ has only one energy and one will, in contrast with the teaching that he has two energies and two wills, both human and divine. Patriarch Sergius I of Constantinople wrote an initial letter informing Honorius of the monothelite controversy, asking Honorius to endorse a position that church unity should not be endangered by having any discussions or disputes over Christ's possessing one energy or two. Sergius added that the doctrine of two energies could lead to the erroneous belief that Jesus has two conflicting wills. Pope Honorius' reply in 635 endorsed this view that all discussions should cease, and agreed that Jesus does not have two conflicting wills, but one will, since Jesus did not assume the vitiated human nature tainted by Adam's fall, but human nature as it existed prior to Adam's fall. He was apparently aware of the rise of Islam and viewed this new religion's tenets as closely resembling those of Arius. Anathematization. Topic. More than 40 years after his death, Honorius was anathematized by name along with the Monothelites by the Third Council of Constantinople First Trullin in 680. The anathema read, after mentioning the chief Monothelites, "...and with them Honorius, who was prelate of Rome, as having followed them in all things." Furthermore, the Acts of the Thirteenth Session of the Council state and with these we define that there shall be expelled from the Holy Church of God and anathematized Honorius who was some time Pope of Old Rome, because of what we found written by him to Patriarch Sergius, that in all respects he followed his view and confirmed his impious doctrines." The 16th session adds, "...to Theodore of Furin, the heretic, anathema. To Sergius, the heretic, anathema. To Cyrus, the heretic, anathema." To Honorius, the heretic, anathema. To Pyrrhus, the heretic, anathema. However, Pope Leo II's letter of confirmation of the Council interprets the Council as intending to criticize Honorius not for error of belief, but rather for imprudent economy of silence. Leo's letter states, We anathematize the inventors of the new error, that is, Theodore, Sergius and also Honorius, who did not attempt to sanctify this apostolic church with the teaching of apostolic tradition, but by profane treachery permitted its purity to be polluted." The New Catholic Encyclopedia notes, "...it is in this sense of guilty negligence that the papacy ratified the condemnation of Honorius." Persons such as Cesare Baronio and Bellarmine have challenged accusations that Pope Honorius I taught heresy. This anathema against Honorius was later one of the main arguments against papal infallibility in the discussions surrounding the First Vatican Council of 1870, where the episode was not ultimately regarded as contrary to the proposed dogma. This was because Honorius was not considered by the supporters of infallibility to be speaking ex cathedra in the letters in question and he was alleged to have never been condemned as a monothelite, nor, asserted the proponents of infallibility, was he condemned for teaching heresy, but rather for gross negligence and a lax leadership at a time when his letters and guidance were in a position to quash the heresy at its roots, historian Yaroslav Pelikan notes. It is evident, as Maximus noted in exoneration of Honorius, that his opposition to the idea of two wills was based on the interpretation of two wills as two contrary wills. He did not mean that Christ was an incomplete human being, devoid of a human will, but that as a human being he did not have any action in his body nor any will in his soul that could be contrary to the action and will of God, that is, to the action and will of his own divine nature. Topic. See also Topic. List of popes 
Topic. References. Topic. Topic. Bibliography. Topic. Mayendorf, John. 1989. Imperial Unity and Christian Divisions, The Church 450-680 AD. The Church in History. 2. Crestwood, N.Y., St. Vladimir's Seminary Press. Harkianakis, Stylianos The Infallibility of the Church in Orthodox Theology. Sydney, St. Andrew's Orthodox Press. Barry, John B., A History of the Later Roman Empire from Arcadius to Irene, Vol. 2 2005. Heffel, Charles J., A History of the Councils of the Church, from the Original Documents, Vol. 5 1896. Topic. External links Topic. Guilty only of failure to teach History of the Christian Church, Vol. 4, Mediaeval Christianity. A.D. 590-1073, Philip Schaff Original text taken from a paper copy of the 9th edition Encyclopædia Britannica 1881 and the Catholic Encyclopedia.